Hello, I thought I would do a um, video on how to maintain your dog's coat at home. I've got a series of videos. This one's gonna be about um, brushing out your dog. Uh, I'll also be covering things like um, trimming around your dog's eyes and um, perhaps trimming the nails as well. But this one um, specifically is about brushing out the coat. Now, Fred here has got quite a long, quite a thick coat. He's got what we call a doodle coat. And a doodle coat is anything that's kind of crossed with a, a wool-coated breed. So it's like something like a poodle or a bichon. Uh, anything that's crossed with that kind of, that kind of coat. So cockapoos, sheepoos, um, pomapoos, all those kind of dogs. He's actually a schnoodle. So he's a schnauzer crossed with a poodle. Um, and he's got actually got quite a long coat, but most of the coats that, um, that, require kind of brushing out um hopefully will be coming in quite regularly so i have a little bit less coat than this um if you're brushing your dog regularly um once a week and you're thorough once a week and your dog is groomed regularly every sort of four to six weeks then you'll find that brushing out the, the dog is really really easy um if you're if your grooming regime is more like eight to twelve weeks then that's when your uh, it becomes a lot harder to do and that's when sort of not start to form so you just have to be a little bit harder with your brush so the more coat that the dog has, the harder you need to brush. And there's lots of coat there, so you can, you can kind of be quite, quite rough with your, quite firm with your brush, actually. So first thing that I do is I, you want to get them up on the table. Uh, dogs that are regularly groomed are groomed on tables in salons, and that's where they are quite comfortable. They're used to being handled on the table. So as soon as you get them on the table at home, they should automatically kind of get into being groomed mindset. It's much easier to control them on the table and whilst the dog is on the table um, they are in your domain you're not in their domain so uh, they tend to behave a little bit better so try and keep them um, restrained if you can it's not always very practical um, not quite so bad if you've got uh, if you're using like a worktop in the kitchen or uh, something against the wall then you don't have to worry quite so much um, but if you're using like a kitchen table or something then I would either push it against the wall um, or, or use something that we, perhaps you can, you can attach the lead, um, perhaps to a hook in the wall or, or a covered handle or something like that, just to make sure that they, they don't jump off and make sure you never leave your dog unattended on the table. So um, I sell a couple of brushes here in the salon. Um, they are uh, flexi brushes that you can buy from Simpsons Grooming Supplies, um, but I actually sell them myself because I use them in the salon. So we all tend to have these um, for sale if you do want them and you can find the prices on our um, on our Facebook page so the one I'm using on here is a doodle slicker and this is for the doodle coat so like I said anything crossed with a poodle um, or a, a beetle with this wool kind of coat so I'm going to start off by brushing him with the light blue side I'll then swap round to the darker side the lighter side kind of opens the coat up and allows the pins to get next to the skin and the darker side helps to brush out any knots. So I've taken my, um, you need to use a, some kind of spray. So either a conditioning spray, uh, I use the Banish dematting spray. It's something that I have in the salon. Uh, you'll probably see that if you're coming in, you'll see the bottoms of it around the tables. Um, always use Banish. It's a really, really good spray and it helps to any knots that kind of slide out and it also helps the, the dust just to go through the coat a lot easier. Um, the more comfortable it is for the dog to be brushed, the more, more accepting of, of being brushed they will be. So I'm going to give him a good spray. So perhaps about five or six sprays over one side. And then I'm gonna take my brush and I'm going to start off by just, I tend to start at the back of the dog and I'll work my way forward. So I'm just going to start at the back foot. So I'm going to lift most of the hair away and I'm going to brush quite hard using my light coloured side. Go all the way round. And I'm going to concentrate on places like um, just, in, just where the foot, where the, uh, the leg comes down and turns into the foot. Often that can get quite knotty there. So give that a little bit of a harder brush there. And then you can move your hand up and then carry on brushing. And what I'm doing is I'm brushing where I can see the skin here, because that's where the knots start to form. They don't form on the ends of the coat, they form next to the skin.
Another place to kind of concentrate on is this area here. This is what we call the tuck area. So if your dog has a very, very short body and it's kept like almost like clipped down um, to about a half centimetre long, you don't have to worry about that. But for dogs with longer coats or with a skirt, then you'll need to concentrate on, especially this area, this is what we call a friction area, which is where the coat moves quite a bit as the dog runs and plays and walks around. And that bit can get quite knotty. So I'm just, if you see what I'm doing, I'm, I'm kind of keeping the hair parted and I'm brushing next to the skin. Come here, Fred. Now you might find that your dog will happily lay down whilst it's being brushed, in which case, by all means, if the dog wants to lay down while, while you know, it's being brushed, then you might actually find that easier. A lot of show people will have their dogs laying on their sides while they're brushing them out, especially the longer coated dogs. So I'm brushing quite hard. Come here, Fred. Brushing, brushing quite hard on him. And I'm trying to cover every place, so underneath the arms as well, underneath the tummy. If, you're, if you find a bit of a knot, you can always give an extra squirt of the Vanish spray. Most dogs don't like their front legs done, but just be firm and don't stop. That's a good boy, Fred. Just keep going, even if they get their head in the way. Whoopsie. Even if they get their head in the way, just keep going. Don't, don't allow them to kind of win. And if you start this process you know, straight away after the groom, so if the dog's been groomed and a week later, I will start brushing, you'll find that you actually stop knots from, from forming. So I'm brushing quite hard. And I'm concentrating on certain areas. So like I said, the skirt line, the legs are quite important to kind of keep an eye on. Um, if your dog wears a harness, then this, this section where the harness sits, you'll have to brush quite hard and have to pay quite a bit of attention to. That's one area that I'm finding these days with more and more dogs that are coming in with harnesses. It's the harness area that's starting to get matted because the harness rubs on the coat. So it knocks the coat off underneath. So Fred's got quite a lot of coat, but because um, we've been growing him out, but um, most dogs shouldn't have this amount of coat. And once you've gone over with one side with the light coloured brush, then you go back over with the dark coloured side, concentrating on the knee area, and I'm doing doing the inside of the leg as well. Don't forget the inside of the leg. Although on most dogs, we tend to try and keep that area quite short, just for hygiene reasons, really, and to make it a bit easier for them to brush. Another place to not forget is the tail. A lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of people tend to forget that they need to brush their dog's tail, um, especially the underside of the tail. That's really quite important. So make sure that you're, um, you're holding the tail, especially at the end of the tail, that you've got your fingers over the actual tail bone itself, and you're brushing onto your hand. And don't forget this bit here as well, because this is a, an area that gets really quite knotty. So when it comes to brushing out the head, come on, Fred. just sit down for a bit, for a bit. Just sit. No? Now, on a, a dog with longer hair around their head, it's quite handy because you can use this hair to kind of grip hold of the face, keep the head still um, without being too, um, Holding a, holding a dog's muzzle can sometimes be over restraining and it can actually make them want to pull their head away because they don't like the, their muzzle being held. But holding around the around the, um, the moustache and the beard is actually quite comfortable for a lot of dogs and they actually prefer uh, the head being held that way. And that's the way that most of us groomers will hold your dog when we're trying to trim around the face and so on. So it's a good place to hold. If your dog doesn't like being held around there, it's quite possible that he prefers his muzzle being held. Um, but either either way, you need to hold it quite 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 firm but not too tight because if you go too tight then you're going to make the dog want to pull their head away so um, i'm going to concentrate on on this bit this area under here on on the longer haired dogs especially dogs with the beard the schnauzer so don't forget underneath the beard because this bit gets really matted really quickly um underneath the ears because that's an area that gets quite matted very quickly the ears themselves 
top of the head isn't normally too bad, but you might you need to be thorough and do every area. So with the ears, I'm just going to hold the ear and I'm going to brush away from the ear leather. And I'm going to try and keep a lot of the hair, if you've got quite long ears, then try and keep a lot of the top of hair away from the bottom of the ear. Because what you'll find is that where the ear flap ends, um, that's the area that gets matted really quickly. So we're going to try and just move some of the hair out of the way with my hand and just brush again next to the skin on the edge of the ear flap and go all the way around. Be a little bit careful though because you can overbrush this area and sometimes catch the, the ear leather itself. So you can hold the hair up, the ear up out of the way. If you're holding the head, um, the, 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 um, the hair around the face, you can actually hold the ear at the same time. And then I can use that to then brush, to brush underneath the ears. Keeps the ear, ear out the way. And again, just underneath, so I'm going to get hold of a handful of, of uh, beard and moustache hair and just brush underneath. It's a good boy, Fred. This is a bit awkward I'm, I normally stand in front of him to do this, but obviously I'm trying to film, so I'm trying to show you what I'm doing at the same time. And very carefully, um, when you come to do around the, um, the, the moustache here, you might want to put your hand in front of the eyes, just so that you're not gonna scratch the eye with your brush. Good boy, Fred. Now, ideally, you should be able to get hold of a metal comb and go through your, through your coat afterwards with the comb. I'm not gonna do that on him because his coat needs, um, he's bathing and it's quite dirty at the moment. So um, if I go through with the comb now, it's just gonna, it's gonna snag on the coat. Um, but a nice metal comb, um, I also sell the combs here um, and you can buy those for um, 12 pounds, I believe they are. Um, and they'll just last a lifetime if you look after them. So the other brush that, I, that we use, the purple brush is, is a much, is more of a, an all round brush and we can use those on dogs such as um, double coated dogs. So retrievers and long haired German shepherds and they get out dead coats, they're, they're, it's really good for those. Um, but also they're very good for uh, Westies, Schnauzers, um, dogs such as um, Yorkshire Terriers, um, Shih Tzus. So they're quite a good general purpose brush and they're the same price, they're £15 each. Um, the spray is six pounds, um, but if you buy the spray and the brush at the same time, it's 18 pounds. So you've got quite a saving on buying the brush and the spray together. And if you want to get your, um, if you bring your bottle back in, I can re refill your bottle for four pounds. So that's kind of like saving the environment. And um, also it means that you can kind of keep it topped up quite easily each time you come in for your grooming. So um, that's a little bit of a few little tips really for you on how to brush out your dog at home.